सो मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी आई थिंक जॉइंट प्रिजर्वेशन इज बेसिकली द कोर ऑफ नी आर्थ्रोस्कोपी एंड इन दैट मेनिस्कस प्रिजर्वेशन मेनिस्कस रिपेयर इज द एब्सोल्यूट नेसेसिटी सो एज एक्सपेक्टेड वी हैव अ गुड ऑडियंस हियर टू लर्न द नुएंसिस now as we were discussing with dr patrick in our country and in, even in my experience we've been encountering uh, meniscus repair meeting since early 2010 2011 and uh, i think we are now having all the necessary equipment to tackle these tears of this the gold standard today is the inside out meniscus repair it's the gold standard because you have a very strong biomechanical construct it's the gold standard because it's cost effective it's the gold standard because you are creating very small punctures in the meniscus which can otherwise be potential stress risers for re tears this is my profile i'm dr nagraj chetty from mumbai i have a dedicated arthroscopy and shoulder surgery practice so the journey for meniscus repair actually started with the early days of pkc where we used to have these small sessions on meniscus repair which has now become a full conference on this uh, the journey progressed to one of the masters in uh, knee preservation that is robert laprat from whom i learned the tips and tricks of inside out meniscus repair a classic case scenario young athletic male had a twisting injury landed up with a bucket handle tear all of us know about the double pcl sign what i would uh, suggest here is look at the actual image because that's where you can make out into which zone the tear is so as you can see here it's from the red uh, red red zone can can you look at this pointer please so uh, this slide you're going to see very frequently in every meniscus talk so uh, this is from steve arnoxy and the perimeniscal uh, capillary plexus basically saying that the blood circulation is only in the outer one third and just about in the middle one third and therefore you need to be sure about the three zones that is the red red zone the red white zone and the white zone so healing obviously is better in the red red zone in the red white zone you need to create some effort so that healing happens which is part of my second talk and in the white zone usually you can get away with doing a meniscectomy i would not get into the preparation of the bi uh, biological preparation because that's part of my second talk what's important to understand is imagine the meniscus repair devices like chopsticks and imagine the circumferential fibers of the menisci like noodles if you try to hold them parallel to the noodles you're never going to get a good grip on it only if you go perpendicular to the noodles only then you will get a good grip and that's the idea of putting the repair devices perpendicular because you get a good grip and therefore you need to go for vertical mattress sutures whenever feasible now why whenever feasible it is difficult to achieve that always so the next best thing is an oblique vertical mattress the last thing is a horizontal mattress so that's the take home message the first thing you need to understand on the medial side especially is how to create a pie crusting i feel for the joint line i just go distal to the joint line create micro fenestrations and then opens up the joint well for you to visualize now what is the zone of the tear make sure that that bulky instruments can come in without scuffing the cartilage plan the number of stitches that you need to do ability to go to the back visualize the red red zone red white zone so all of this advantages come with the pie crusting the next thing is the hook probe technique that i learned from robert laprat so i shift the scope to the medial portal and get my uh, hook probe from the lateral portal and shove it into the posterior medial corner and that can be palpated there for you to create your safety incision if you want to do your inside out meniscus repair properly you need to know how to take a good safety incision so you feel for that hook probe go posterior to the medial femoral condyle take a vertical incision the first thing that you come across is the sartorius fascia do some blunt dissection you need to go to this interval so in the front is your superficial mcl in the back is your medial gast gastrocnemius in below is your semi membranosus so put a retractor down in the semi membranosus put a retractor in the in the superficial mcl and put a spoon which is pushing the medial gastroc away so like it is named it is a good safety incision so that's the hook probe technique knee has been flexed to 90 degree a posterior vertical incision base the incision 2/3 below 1/3 above that gives you a lot of play to retrieve those needles that's me incising the sartorius fascia that's me dissecting the capsule and that's the simple spoon from your kitchen on the lateral side again you take a longitudinal incision you dissect the it band like so slightly posteriorly you create a longitudinal incision in the it band dissect the lateral gastroc this time away and then you're ready to use your cob elevator to push the entire gastroc with the neurovascular bundle and then the spoon comes in 
This is the first generation. I would recommend do not go for these. These are too bulky. It's very difficult to create inside out meniscus repair with these. And you need an assistant who actually pushes these uh, preloaded needles with a needle holder. It makes it very difficult. It's already a difficult uh, surgery. The second generation came in where it was a single lumen and it had a 360 degree movement. This was good. But again, you needed, needed an assistant who can push the needle with a needle holder. The newer generation has got the ability for you to have zone specific cannula. So you have different cannulas of different shape for the posterior portion, middle portion, and you can turn it 360 degree to go above and below the meniscus. And you can fire it yourself. So your assistant simply pushes it in, it gets locked, and then you can fire the device through. So that's how you lock the device, turn it 360 degree, go above the meniscus, go below the meniscus, and you can simply fire it yourself. So you'll see a video of this now. Now this is the left knee, this is the medial meniscus. Visualizing from the anteromedial portal, the devices always come from the diagonally opposite portal. There is always a prominent medial tibial spine. Use your shaver, burr out the medial tibial spine. That will give you access for your these instruments to come in around the medial tibial spine. And actually with practice, you can go all the way up to the posterior horn and the root with the inside out technique. So that's the device coming in, the needle has been loaded, the assistant is sitting there at the safety incision to retrieve the needles, you fire the needles, flex the knee, once you are entering the meniscus, flex the knee. So the needle deflects through the spoon and your assistant is able to see that. So that's being fired and simultaneously the assistant is retrieving the needle. So as he's pulling, you fire the needle from here. So these are preloaded needles, so one on the capsular side, one on the meniscus side. And if you see one above and one below, so I put one above, immediately put one below, three to five millimeter apart, and you will see the meniscus getting reduced. So that is called restoration of the meniscal flounce. That tells you when is that this flounce is restored that you have not overtly tensioned it. You go ahead with more stitches. So it's a zigzag fashion repair, three to five millimeters apart, and multiple such needles will make sure it's a very strong construct. Another uh, undersurface repair. So, so a tear like this, you would, you would put at least four to six above and four to six below. We also have other company devices which are much more ergonomic. So you can use your thumb to actually push it through. And you can see my assistant is flexing to make sure it is deflecting away from the neurovascular structures. Previously, I used to pass all the sutures and it used to create a lot of madness. Now what I do is as the sutures are passed and as it is retrieved, I tie a sliding knot immediately and cut it off at near extension as possible. This makes your life very easy and creates a very nice biomechanically strong construct. So that's the typical uh, position. So this is the assistant. That's me holding the camera and uh, alternately you will have to go. Now the ne next best thing is you can actually approach the mid body also through these stairs. And this is the zone specific cannula, which is for the mid body. Until now, what you saw is for the posterior horn. So now you have a device, which is mid body, which is angulated in such a way that you can come from the same portal. So if you're real, if you're repairing the medial meniscus, you come through the medial portal itself. And that's the beauty of having the zone specific cannulas. So this is the repair. This is the uh, right knee. The posterior has been repaired. For the posterior, we were working from the diagonally opposite portal, that is anterolateral portal. Now the mid body. So you're visualizing from the anterolateral portal, which is a normal scopy view. And from the medial portal, you can put a device here. Why is it safe? Because you're away from the neurovascular bundle. Do you want to do this when you're repairing on the posterior side? Ideally, no. Always come from the diagonally opposite portal, whether it's the medial or the lateral side. So that's the zone specific cannula. The needle, which is preloaded with the high tensile suture, being fired, the assistant retrieves it there, pass it on the meniscal side first, then the capsular side. And as you pull on the sutures, again, you restore the meniscus flaunce and a good stable repair and tie it off immediately. You would obviously create, uh, I will talk about this uh, uh, in my next talk, and that's the stable repair that you're able to achieve. So three to four stitches above, three to four stitches below. On table itself, this knee has been moved to 90 degrees. So you're very sure that the patient can be mobilized to 90 degree as early as possible. And these patients do extremely well. They achieve their range of motion very early. Take home message, use these fine preloaded needles, which are very biomechanically strong. They do not create any stress risers, so that risk of retire reduces. 
whether it's a sharpshooter or the zone navigator, any of these devices work very well. Use these zone specific cannulas to your advantage in the posterior horn and the mid body. And any questions, we will take it at the end of the session. Thank you.